So previously we covered the LTE labs. So all the LTE system is we covered from start, how to generate the bits and then uh, finally finishing with the uh, bit error rate. So today is a new session of lab. Let me open the PowerPoint and share, you, share the screen with you. So can you see my screen? Yeah, I think you yes. can. Yeah, okay. So uh, we are starting with a new lab and the title of the lab is Let's Play with Wireshark. So we'll be uh, seeing the function of the Wireshark and how, why do we need it and how to collect the packet using the Wireshark. So let's do some cool things with the uh, Wireshark. So here you can see the, if you want to download the Wireshark, I, it's very simple. Uh, no matter you have the MacBook or anything you have, you can simply go to Wireshark website and it's open source so you can download it for free. So just go there and then click on the download. So can you see my screen? And yes. here in the download, you can like just see which one do you need. Uh, uh, it will directly direct you to the Windows based uh, or for the MacBook version so you can have different uh, you may have different operating system and yeah based on that you can just download your desired version and then just run it and i think you already know how to install something on your computer and finally you will see something like this Okay, so this is the wire shard. Uh, we will come back to this thing, but let's let me give you some brief review uh, what the wire shard is. So it's a network protocol analyzer, um, and you can see the network from the macroscopic level. So you can see the packet of the network going from one source to the other destination. And then you can open the packet and you can read a lot of things related to the packet, like what is the header length, what is the data feed length, length and what is, if it is the wireless packet, then what standard it is using, what channel it is using. And a lot of things are there that are that you can inspect on using this Wireshark tool. And it's really easy because you can just click on the double click. If you can see this window, you can just double click on this frame and it will give you this window. And here you can see the frame, Ethernet or Internet protocol or transmission control protocol. So if you want to see the frame feature, you will just click on this plus button and it will give you a lot of details related to the frames. If you want to see the Ethernet feature, if you will see the Ethernet uh, details. Uh, and if, you're, you, if you can see the wireless packets or the Wi-Fi packets, then you can also see some header type uh, uh, he, uh, header type and you can click on it and it will also shows you like what kind of um, what is the channel and what is the uh, signal to noise ratio what is the signal strength and all those information you can see from the header tape and then the internet protocol which will show you what is your source ip address what is the destination ip address and all those details and finally the fourth one will show you the transmission control protocol, uh, which will also not only show you the port address, but uh, also the related information, whether the packet is UDP or it is a TCP. So all those information you can see in the last one, this, this one uh, tab, uh, it's not a tab. Yeah, by clicking this plus, you can just 
uh, see all those information. So this is a very nice tool and it is used to see your network from a microscopic level. So you can see a lot of details related to a single packet. You can open the packet and you can see every detail of that packet using the Wireshark. Uh, and the Wireshark can be used in two ways, whether you want to inspect the wired traffic or wireless traffic. So if you want to inspect the wired traffic, which means the ethernet mode, uh, if you want to use it in the ethernet mode, then it's very simple. You don't have to plug in some other device you, since your uh, cable. Uh, have you seen this one in your computer, this port? Maybe it's not available in the modern laptops because they already have the Wi-Fi port, but yeah, you can see it on your desktop and also in the old laptop, you can see this ethernet port. So uh, if you can see this ethernet port, you, there is a RJ45 cable, which is your internet cable running to it. And that means that your this port is connected to the internet, if you have the internet connection too. So from there, you can see that how your data is going and how the packet from outside world is coming to your computer. And if you are uh, inspecting it on a switch level or on a router level, then you can see a lot of other computers data running on this port and going to the outside world and the outside world coming from outside to the different computers. So you can also using the Wireshark and you can see this one, Ethernet, you can use it in the Ethernet mode. And the other mode is the uh, wireless mode, which is a bit complicated. So if you wanna use the wireless mode, it means that you wanna see the traffic in air. Okay, so you you are using the mobile and a lot of people are there. There is some are using the laptop, some are using tablets and different devices are connected there and it's mixed traffic. So there are some people are using the Netflix, for example, and other people are using the Skype or Zoom. So different kind of traffic is going in the ear and you cannot see anything in the ear, but you have to capture the packets that is running in the ear. So the Wi-Fi device, it wirelessly connect you to the internet, right? So you're using the mobile and you only have the credential of that uh, Wi-Fi device. You just associate with that Wi-Fi and then you can use the internet. You are not connected through wire. So everything is happening uh, wirelessly. But it's not so simple to just uh, use the Wireshark and see everything in air. Uh, it's a bit complicated. For that, you need two more. One is the monitoring mode and the other is premise case mode that I told you here, I have explained it here, monitoring mode and premise case mode. So I'll come back to these two modes, what these modes are, but uh, the as a whole, you need something, some device too, because the simple uh, Wi-Fi device, the, you have the Wi-Fi device on your laptop, also you have the Wi-Fi device on your uh, smartphone or you have the Wi-Fi device on your, even on the smartwatch everywhere, you have the Wi-Fi device. But that Wi-Fi device is only to send the data and to receive the data. It's not for the monitoring purpose, okay? So you have uh, to, you cannot simply use your, the Wi-Fi device of any computer or the smartwatch or the mobile to see the network traffic around. For that, you have to do some changes in the Wi-Fi driver to make it in the monitoring mode. So magnetic mode means that uh, any packet radiating from any device and going to anywhere, you can see that packet flow. You can see that this packet is from your mobile and it is going to the Wi-Fi number one. And then the other packet from the other mobile is going to that Wi-Fi device and then you can open that packet and you can see what channel that packet is using and then what is the signal to noise ratio of that packet or like what is the signal strength of that packet and a lot of other related information you can see and that is uh, happening seamlessly so you are not connected to that one okay so for that you need the monitoring mode so simply by simple wi-fi you cannot do it so one of the solution is to use an external device external device for example i will show you an erp cap that i'm using now this one can you see it here so this is the erp cap device and it is 
the actually capturing the uh, wireless traffic and these are the two antennas and they, they are in the monitoring mode so any uh, traffic flowing in the air they are captured by these two antennas and then they are given to the wireshark okay and and wireshark you can see are those wireless traffic so since i cannot use the ordinary wi-fi so i have to use some extra device one is the uh, ear picket i will show you some uh, link here Your P cap. So it's the device. You can see. Can you see this picture? So this ear P cap device can be used to sniff the picket that is in the ear. Okay. So you can connect it to your computer, and then your computer is connect. Uh, you you have installed already the Wireshark. So you will just give this device path in the Wireshark and then where through the Wireshark you can see the real-time packets that is going out from some device to some other destination right so this ERP cap I have used this one so I'll show you now how this thing works and one other method is uh, you can use the Mac so the MacBook has a built-in feature you can I'll also show you how to enable the monitor mode in the MacBook and from the MacBook you can also see the ear, the traffic in the ear. And if you are a more advanced user, then there are some GitHub libraries, some APIs are there. For example, the next month, uh, monitor, for example. But you don't have to uh, use this one. So this is the next month. They are using some tools. And those tools can be used in various devices like Samsung Mobile or the Nexus 5 Mobile, Raspberry Pi, iPhone 6. So you have to install these APIs into your mobile and then your mobile Wi-Fi driver will be modified. And then you can also see the traffic around uh, in the air using um, the monitoring mode. Okay, so let's see in detail what is the monitoring mode and what is the... Uh, premise case mode. So the first one is the monitoring mode. So the monitoring mode is a very strong mode. And in the monitoring mode, you can see every device in the network. So you don't have to connect or to associate with the particular Wi-Fi. Like you shouldn't have the username and password for the Wi-Fi. You just go into the monitor mode and you can see the list of the devices and all the devices MAC addresses, all the devices IP addresses and everything that is there in the network. And then you can filter a particular device. Okay, this is, uh, for example, someone is using iPhone and I, you already know the MAC address from there. And then you apply the filter on that one. And then you can only see the traffic going from the iPhone. So the iPhone traffic going to a Wi-Fi and then it's just broadcasting some packets or anything that is happening to that iPhone, you can inspect that particular um, device. And also you can, for example, choose a particular Wi-Fi device. So uh, if this is your Wi-Fi device is connected, you can just connect, um, you can filter the address, the MAC address of this Wi-Fi, and then it will show you all the traffic coming in and going out from this uh, router from this device right so uh, the what is the strength or the advantage of the monitoring mode you don't have to associate to any device and you can still see the traffic and there is no limit you can see as many devices as much they are in the network so you since you are not connected to any device so you are you can connect to uh, you can see the traffic of every device what is the cons what is the drawback the drawback is you cannot when once you are in the monitoring mode, you cannot send or receive the data, which means that you will be completely dis disconnected from the internet because you are listening to something. So you are listening to the whole ear and what is happening in the ear, you are only checking that part. So you, if you have to use some messenger or your own uh, do, uh, internet uh, stuff, then you it will not work. It will stop work because the data communication will turn off. The, you, you cannot send or receive the data. So that is the drawback of the monitoring mode. 
The other one is the promiscuous mode. The promiscuous mode is has some limitations, and that limitation is uh, this is your device, and that is it has to be associated to a specific uh, router or Wi-Fi device. So once it is uh, associated with a Wi-Fi device, then any traffic coming into this Wi-Fi device or any traffic going out from this Wi-Fi device, you can only see that one. So what is the advantage? You can still send or receive the data because you are already associated to a Wi-Fi device and you can see the traffic that is also associated to this Wi-Fi device. What is the cons? What is the drawback? The drawback is at a time you can only see one, one Wi-Fi device or one router where you are connected with. For example, you are connected to, or you are associated to this one. It means that you can only see the devices that are connected to this particular uh, device. But if you want to see the uh, traffic of the other uh, network device or the other router, that is not possible using the premise case was it is possible if you just switch to uh, uh, the other device and then you associated, you use the username and password of that uh, Wi-Fi uh, other router, then in that case, you can see all the traffic related to the other Wi-Fi device and so on. Okay, so the uh, advantages, you can still send and receive the data. Your data mode is not off, but the drawback is at a time you can only see the traffic that is re related to that particular router, okay? So this is uh, about the premiscus mode. So now let's go to the... Um, uh, Okay, do you have any question in all this explanation? If you have any question, you can ask. If you don't have question, then I'll proceed to the next part. Okay, so it seems like you don't have a question. So let me go to the other part. So uh, I'll just start from the beginning. Uh, you have to tap the Wireshark once you install it. And again, I will tell you that it's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. It's open source. So you just go to the mm -hmm. website and you just type in Google Wireshark space download. It will direct you to the link. There you just click on the download and just run it. You will go through two, three steps and it will take a few seconds. That doesn't take too, too long like MATLAB. So it's very, it's a very light software. Uh, so this is the giving you a GUI interface. So graphical user interface, and you can see everything visually. You can visually see everything, the Wireshark. There are also some other tools like Kismet. It is called Kismet K-I-S-M-E-T and also the TCP dump. So you can also use those for the network inspection, but they can be, used only in the uh, command, uh, the terminal mode. So you cannot see the graphical user interface. So if you are advanced user, you may be prefer to using those uh, TCP dump or Kismet, or if you are just want to see everything visually or the inspect every, all the traffic like this, then this is a good tool. The Wireshark is a good tool. So you can see all the list of the devices here. For example, the ERP cap, which is this one. Okay, and then you have the ethernet that I told you. My computer is also connected to the ethernet, so I can also see the uh, ethernet traffic. And the, these two are my virtual machines that I'm not using now. So I also have the virtual machine. If I open it, then I can also see the traffic going out and coming into my virtual machines where I have installed the Ubuntu and other stuff. So they're not important. Okay, so for example, I want to see, okay, let's come back to the important part, but let, let me show you the a bit irrelevant part, which is the ethernet. I, we, since this is the wireless communication course, we, we don't want to see anything related uh, to the wired communication, but just let me show you a quick look, uh, uh, review of this thing too. So if you see the, if you double click on the ethernet, this is all the traffic that is going from your computer and all the traffic that is coming to your computer. So here, what is the source? Source is uh, where the traffic is generated. What is the destination? The destination is where the packet has to be sent. And then this is the length. So you can also see 
what is the length of the frame and then you can see what is the protocol so whether it is udp or tcp you can see that and if you are if you click on any particular uh, frame you can see you can inspect it like this for example this is the frame number 10714 so the question is why it is 101714 since you can see the flow is very quick so it is not the time when i turn on my computer but it's the time when i turn on this word shark and it's the frame number which which has been this much of the frames have been sent there and uh, then uh, what is the length of that frame or that packet that is like the 69 byte and uh, if we further see if we further want to see some uh, other relevant information for example the delta from the previous frame so which means that the frames are sent back to back see they are sent like back to back so it is also seeing what is the time difference from of the current frame from the previous frame so it is this much of time and the time delta from previous displayed frame so uh, the same frame with the same mac address and the same uh, ip everything but it was displayed before okay so it's like uh, the same information and then time since the first frame so when you open the well shark and when these frames started flowing, so how much time it took from the first frame till this frame? So it's almost like 36 seconds in this case. And then some what protocol it is using. So it is using the uh, UDP protocol. And if we see here, so this is the MAC address of the destination and this is the MAC address of your source. So MAC is the physical address and that is unique to every device so uh, you you have this particular device which is which is uh, having this ethernet port with this mac address this physical address and then uh, that is the destination and this one is the source so uh, some other related information from the ipv4 uh, protocol and then the UDP, some information related to the UDP, what is the source port, what is the destination port, and all those information, and what kind of data is being sent there. So this is the data, if you double click on it, uh, yeah, so it's only the 27 length of byte, the 27 length byte of data is going there. So this is related to the ethernet but we are not interested in the ethernet so let's go and this is the stop button if you want to save this file you will go to the file then save is and then you can save it in whatever format you want so usually we save it in the pk file so you will just type the name for example abc dot pcap and then save it into any part so i'm saving it on the desktop for example and i'll just save it and it is it should be on my desktop this one abc dot pkip so next time whenever i'm using the matlab maybe in the next lab we will be using the matlab to inspect this packet open up this packet using the matlab and grab some important information for example the byte length from it or something from it using the matlab so you can save the real-time data real-time data means that at the same time when you are working and you can see the data too so you can capture the real-time data and you can further analysis that using some uh, advanced software and then now i'm just clicking on this one and i'm choosing the wireless pcap so ear pcap so if you start this one you will see all the information that are related to the wireless protocols, the, the wireless devices, and then you can filter it too. So if you see, uh, if I just randomly click on any of that, for example, this one. So here you can see some additional information. One is the frame, what is the radio header, uh, radio tape header. So this is a digital that was not present before. Then what is the A2 2.11 radio information? It was not pre previously mentioned because they two are related to the wireless channel. Okay, so all the information here are related to the A2 2.11. 
and uh, there is no so you cannot find anything related to the ethernet because it's not ethernet it's now the wireless lane information okay so uh, we can now see for example let's inspect what is there inside the frame so if you see what is your interface so this is my interface now okay so i am capturing everything using this erp cap device so this is the erp cap interface here and again uh, the i explain you they are exactly the same and then what is the frame number so the frame number which the frame that i have clicked here it is the frame number 5010 but if i click the other frame it is 8137 but if i click the other frame it is 8467 since the frames are continuously coming so each time i'm clicking the frame it will be incrementing and it will be giving me the exact reference of that frame and then the length of the frame so it it's having 130 byte of the data and some flags so uh, flags are not important for now let's go to the radio uh, radio tape header this one is important because we can see how close this device is for example whatever we have clicked the packet is going from somewhere to somewhere right but we want to see whether this packet is close this the this device is close to us or this is away from us away from us means this is your interface this is us and that device which is sending the packet which is source address so we want to see how close that device is for, with this one device right so that is the that we can see from this uh, signal strength okay so the antenna signal which is minus 41 dbm and it's a very good one because the around 30 minus 30 to minus 50 around it is considered to be the strong to good uh, rssi and when it is like from the 60 to um, 65 or uh, below 70 it is okay they are reasonable uh, uh, signal strength but when you have like less than minus 70 like minus 80 or something they are bad rssis okay so when you have minus 41 dbm it means they cannot be lost and you can capture all of them so your this device can easily capture it and it can see it and then there is also the noise. So there will be, of course, some noise in your antenna. You are receiving antenna. And from these two information, from the signal and the noise, you can compute the signal to noise ratio, the SNR. OK? So uh, then, OK, what is the radio information? This is also very important. So what kind of standard it is using? So there are different standards It can be the old wi-fi it can be the new wi-fi standard so the old it is old wi-fi why because i know that 802.11b like b or a those are the old wi-fi standards but the 802.11n or 802.11ac they are the latest wi-fi standards you can just google it and you can see the the uh, Wi-Fi standards are the wireless LAN standards, and you can see the different features. So different standards supports different features, and based on that, people implemented. But nowadays, mostly the people are using 802.11n or 802.11ac because they have high data rate, and they are using the OFDF. So uh, what is the data rate of the packet? So the data rate is 1 Mbps and it can be changing and what channel it is using so it's using channel number uh, six and what frequency it is using is i have told you that wi-fi in the previous maybe in the previous lab i had told you that the wi-fi is using 2.4 gigahertz of frequency or 5 gigahertz of frequency why they are using only specifically those two band of frequency because they are free they are licensed free band and uh, any device which Mm, do not pay for the spectrum for the, the the devices which are not buying the frequency spectrum they use those free band so 2.5 2.4 is a license free band and also the uh, 5 gigahertz is a license free band and these are again the same information and yeah so they are also important so the physical address you can also see 
uh, what is the transmitter address? So the transmitter, it will show you the SSID. SSID means that the name, for example, you connect into a Wi-Fi in Harlan 2 or something like that. So that is the SSID of your, uh, yeah, your dead uh, device or uh, the name of the network. So sometime it is IP time or when you are in the bus, it will be specifically the Wi-Fi of that bus. So that is the SSID. So it shows you the name. And what is the MAC address of that, uh, the physical MAC address? Physical MAC address, it's very important because based on this, you can filter it. So the physical address, which is which should be written on the top of the box which you buy. So it's written on the top of that device. And that is unique to a device. The MAC address is always unique to that device. So it shows that the transmitter, which is the source. So the source and transmitter, they are both similar things, okay? So what is the name? So the name is this one, which is info mark underscore four C and blah, blah. And then the, and the brackets, this is the MAC address, right? So uh, yeah, and it has no destination because it's broadcasting. So broadcasting means that it is uh, a device has a packet and it want to announce it. So it sends the packet to everyone. So everyone can receive that packet. So that is a broadcasting. And unicast mean that this is a one packet, but it is distant to a specific uh, device, other device. So that is unicast, okay? So the broadcast mean that you cannot see a specific destination here, but you will, when you see FF, 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 something like that, MAC address, it means that, that this is a broadcast packet. So this packet is going to someone. I'll show you some packet that is not broadcasted, for example. Now, in this case, this is not a broadcasted packet. So you can see a destination address too. So the source transmitter address is this one and the destination physical address is this one. Right, and then what is the data transmitted here? The data length you can see it from here, which is almost 3.1 kilobyte, right? So we can also extract this feature based on information having here, we can extract it using the MATLAB, right? So all these are very relevant and we will see it further using the MATLAB. So now we saw the difference between the wired packet and also the wireless packet. Now let me show you uh, quickly, uh, show the same thing quickly at the MacBook. So you can also use, in the MacBook, you don't need to have this ERP cap device because the MacBook, MacBook can also support the monitoring mode. So you just turn on the monitoring mode. I'll show you how to turn it on. And then you can inspect the wireless traffic just by using the MacBook built-in feature. Okay, so let's go to, let me switch my screen to the MacBook. So I can, if you look at uh, this, uh, search bar, just write down wireless diagnostics and click on enter on it. So you will see something like this, this uh, wireless di diagnostic window, and then you can continue it. And after it will take some time, maybe a few seconds. And once it is done, uh, it will ask you what kind of mode you want to use. So I want to use the monitoring, monitor my Wi-Fi connection. So please remember, if you haven't done this wireless diagnostic and if you haven't turned on the monitoring mode, your Wireshark will not work. Like it cannot inspect the whole traffic. Then it will work as a normal Wi-Fi device. So when it is a normal Wi-Fi device, it means that uh, it can only send the data and it can only receive the data and it is not intended for the monitoring purpose. But once you turn on this monitoring mode, monitor my Wi-Fi and then you start to work. Okay, sorry. Oh. Then you have to continue it, not the start work. 
and once you continue it, it means that your data trans transmission will stop because your Wi-Fi will switch to the monitoring mode. Then in that case, you can ne neither transmit the data and nor you can receive the data. And now I continued it and now I'm in the monitoring mode and I'm now, I can now turn, I can now open this Wireshark. So by clicking on the Wireshark, I can uh, simply click on the first one, which is related to the Wi-Fi. And my Wi-Fi, I, I, is I know it, that it is in the monitoring mode, so I should be able to see all the traffic. And you can again see that I can see the protocol, which is 802.11n. So as you can see something like that, the protocol is there, 802.11n. It means that your wireless uh, Wireshark can capture the wireless traffic now because this is the wireless standard. What is the length of the packet? So you can also see the length of the packet, what is the signal strength. So you can also see the signal strength and what is the signal to noise ratio. So signal to noise ratio is derived from the signal strength and from the noise strength. And then this is the ratio between the signal and the noise. So by clicking any of that, you can see all those information again, like what frame you have, and what are all those informations related to that frame? What is the radio tape header? So you can also see the signal strength is very high. And then you can also see the antenna noise and everything. And based on that, you can derive the signal to noise ratio. And you can also see all those information. You can see the channel. So it is channel number 153. And 153 channel is 5 gigahertz channel. So the 2.4 gigahertz channel, 2.4 channels uh, are 13. Some in some country it is they are 11 channels, and in some country they are 13 channels, and they are from 1 to 12, uh, 1 to 11, or 1 to 13. So channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So you will be only seeing those numbers when it is 2.4 gigahertz. When it is 5 gigahertz, you can see some channels like 30, 36, 40, or 1. 114, 120, or 153, something like that. So when you see some figures like that, it means that you are using the five gigahertz of the uh, five gigahertz and the channel frequency is this one. So it is using 5.765 gigahertz, okay? So uh, this one, is using this one and yeah all those information are redundant so i already explained these information to you so i hope you can uh, also see um, uh, you can use your macbook if you don't have the erp cap device and then you can inspect the channel uh, sorry you can inspect the packets and then you can stop it and then you can go to the file and then save as and then okay and then save it as the pcap file here, okay? So let's go back to the main screen and use some filtering there. And based on the filter, we want to see the traffic, okay? So uh, I'll switch back to my main screen. Now I have this uh, continuously, the packets are going on, it's they are running. I want to use the packets. So I can say WLN that uh, I have already used some filters there. So for example, this is, I know that what this is, this is my camera traffic. So I, I, I have a camera here, this one. So it also has the MAC address and I know what the MAC address is because, because it's written here. So I can just simply filter the traffic of this camera and I will enter it and then it will take some time. It will, uh, before it start filtering. So you can see this green uh, graph going on and then you can see this 
traffic going out from this camera. Now the source is the camera and the destination is, and I also know what is this uh, destination because I'm always working on it. So this destination is one of our um, router there. So the router addresses is, make address of the router is, a0639116308080 and the, my camera make uh, make address is this one so i only uh, filtered the source address and the destination address but the problem is you cannot see any packets going out and going in uh, from my camera it's they, they seems to be very static so it seems like there are some packets they have been transmitted and then there is no transmission so this camera is run by application. If I run the application, you can see it on the screen. And at the same time, you can see the traffic will start here. So I'll just turn it on. If you can see this I application, if I turn it on. So you can see something is happening here. Some packets have been transmitted here because uh, here is the traffic. Traffic generated by the camera and then the camera is sending those packets. Okay, so this camera is now capturing some outside and there should be some packets going out. So by See from the 507 to this one, tickets came here and then it stopped. So like this, uh, you can filter out any device and based on that filter, it will only work on. Now I want to filter this one is my source one. This is my uh, dead access point. I want to apply it as a filter. So I want to select this one and it is now only uh, seeing the information coming from that one. So it will take some time. Let me make it source address. Now they, they are the information that are related to that particular uh, access point. So it is broadcasting that because sometimes the access point is sending bacons in the ear. So that is FFFFFF, this one. Okay, and sometimes it is sending some packets to some devices and sometime, so you can see its behavior. See, it's like completely, all those things are shown here. Okay, so you can use the source address and the destination address and you can also do <coughs> like this. For example, this is my source address and you can put and, and then you can also put the WLN DA, for example, this is my DA, and then I can say equal, equal, and then some address. So I forgot what was the address of that camera. So if I put that address, or uh, let's say, let me put this one address. So it is 58 colon uh, 65 colon. E6, sorry, E6, colon, 4C, colon, uh, E5, colon, at zero, no, D9, D9. So if I enter it, now it will only filter the source generating from this Wi-Fi and going to this destination. So by filtering it, yeah, it's still working. Oh, it's not available. I think I have written it wrong. 58 colon six. Oh, it's not this one. It's invalid. Uh, 58, six, five. It is 65. And then E6 colon. Now I think it is fine, then 4C, then E5, and then D9. Now you can see that the source is this one, which is this one. So I am filtering the, the traffic generated from the source. So it is the source and the traffic going to this destination, which is this one. Now it will only show you the traffic that is 
generating from their source to their destination. Now you are inspecting the particular flow. Flow means that from a particular device to a particular device, you can you want to see how the packets are flowing like that. So uh, I think this is enough. These are the important thing. If you want to save it, just stop it and go to the file, save as, and for example, uh, I can save it that b.pcap, and I can save it, and I can then see it like abc.pcap, b.pcap, and later on, I can retrieve these files and uh, using some advanced tools, I can further process it. So I think that is enough. Uh, for today and do you have any question later on maybe in the next lab we will see uh, further process it so do you have any question let me check if the people have error late for the attendance Uh, 1606. Uh, here. Late? Yes. Did you come late? late. Yes. Then fourth. No absent. How about 1585? Here. Late? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And one six zero three. Okay. Uh, sorry. One six zero three. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, it's, it's me. Did you come late? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. And then. Okay, and one and eight zero. One and eight zero. Okay. Okay, so that's all for today. And uh, yeah, for the next week, uh, I may take the class for Tuesday. So maybe some of the time will be taken by the professor. Uh, for his lecture and maybe after 30 minutes or something i'll cover the rest of the lab so maybe it will be the continuation to this wireshark lab and then we will wind it up okay so that will be the final lab the next lab will be the final lab and then we will be done then we will you will have the exam so that's all if you don't have a question then yeah see you in the next lab Okay, have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.